Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Taliban prohibit women from working for NGOs in Afghanistan. Indian security forces neutralize four pak back terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. And Tehreek Taliban Pakistan returns to violent ways in Pakistan poses bigger challenge to government. Let's begin the show. Over the past 12 months, human rights violations against women and girls have mounted steadily in Afghanistan. Despite that women would be allowed to exercise their rights within Sharia law, including the right to work and to study, the Taliban has systematically excluded women and girls from public life. The all-male interim government recently ordered all foreign and domestic non-governmental groups in Afghanistan to suspend employing women as some female employees didn't wear the Islamic headscarf correctly. A report. The Taliban regime has ordered yet another diktat that will push Afghan women into the dark ages again. The old male interim government ordered all foreign and domestic non-governmental groups in Afghanistan to suspend employing women as some female employees didn't wear the Islamic headscarf correctly. The ban was the latest restrictive move by Afghanistan's rulers against women's rights and freedoms. The order came in a letter from Economy Minister Kari Din Muhammad Hanif, which said that any NGO found not complying with the order will have their operating license revoked in Afghanistan. In response to the decision, major international aid groups suspended their humanitarian programs in the country. Save the Children, Norwegian Refugee Council, Care International and the International Rescue Committee have said they will wind up operations in Afghanistan. The first three NGOs stated in a joint statement that without their female staff, they would not have been able to assist millions of Afghans in need since August 2021. They added that without women, they could not successfully contact children, women and men in Afghanistan who were in dire need. The Taliban have decreed that uh, women are not allowed to work for international non-governmental organizations and national non-governmental organizations. Um, as we have got 5,000 staff and community, uh, including community volunteers in Afghanistan. Uh, almost half of those are women. Uh, so essentially, if we were to keep working, we'd have to turn up, uh, turn up for work tomorrow with half our workforce missing. Uh, but to have access to women and children, you need to have female health staff. Uh, and so if you don't have female health staff, you, you won't have access to those, to those people. So uh, essentially, uh, it's just not possible for us to do our job if, we, if we, our female colleagues are not able to get out there. Criticizing the action, Western nations and international organizations express strong condemnation of the Taliban move. United Nations mission to Afghanistan has asked the Taliban regime to reverse its ban on women from working in NGOs, saying millions of Afghans need humanitarian assistance and removing barriers is vital. The Taliban claimed under its rule this time, women would be accorded every right within the confines of Sharia law. However, in the months that have followed, the de facto rulers have imposed harsh restrictions on women's education and their access to employment. In March, the Taliban broke their promise to reopen secondary schools for girls. Two months later, women were forced to veil their faces as well as their hair. In September, Women's Affairs Ministry was disbanded and only last week, the Taliban regime banned university education for girls in the country until further notice. I'm sorry that the United States of America has been given to the United States of America. There is no one who can be 
بالاخره وظایف خود شوند و به عنوان یک بخشی از اجتماع بتانن فعالیت های اجتماعی خود را انجام بتن و این واقعا یکی از حالت هایی است که نامید کننده هست امروز زن افغان دیگر هیچ جایگاهی در اجتماع افغانی نداره وقتی من میبینم وقتی کارکرده های زیاره میبینم وقتی روی کردشان در مقابل زن افغان میبینم هیچ عامل دینی نداره هیچ عامل انسانی نداره که ما بگیم به اساس یک آیت دینی به اساس یک حکم دینی زن امروز محروم است زن امروز در خانه در خانه ها است و زن بالاخره به حقارت ورش دیده میشه چنین این چیزی در دین ما وجود نداره The Taliban regime has failed to earn recognition from any UN member state because of their rigid and intransigent mode of governance, their inability to transform their mindset on issues such as women's freedom. Taliban government should understand that a country can't survive in the 21st century by pursuing a retrogressive and ultra-conservative approach. The eventual outcome of suppressing the freedom and creativity of women will be the erosion of Afghan society. Banning women's movements curtailing all their freedom, health and education will augment frustration and anger among Afghan women. In turn, the wrong message will be delivered to the world that the Afghan people are socially backward and can never live a normal life. Pakistan has tried to represent itself as a victim of terrorism. Pakistan claims to have made huge sacrifices to defeat the monster of violence and terrorism in the country. However, the truth is that the unholy nexus of the Pakistani civil government, military establishment and the Islamic clerics have paved the way for the creation of a new more radicalized society. The recent terrorist strike in Pakistan by Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan shows that Terror incidents have increased particularly after TTP called off their ceasefire with the government in November. A report. A suicide car bombing at a checkpoint in Pakistan capital of Islamabad on December 23 killed one police official and injured several others. The initial information indicated that there was a man and a woman in the car and the man blew himself up during a body search. The car was packed with explosives and headed for a high-value target in the capital. The bombing took place near a police headquarters on a main road that leads to a government buildings housing the country's parliament and high offices. Pakistani Taliban, who have been waging a campaign of bombings and suicide attacks for over a decade, have claimed responsibility for the car bombing, saying it was a revenge for the killing of one of their leaders. आज सवा दस बजे एक मशकूक गाड़ी आ रही थी इसी रोड के ऊपर टैक्सी थी उसके अंदर एक मर्द और एक औरत उसमें सवार थे उनको पुलिस के ईगल स्क्वाड ने उनको रोका इंटरसेप्ट किया और मशकूक समझते हुए उनकी बॉडी सर्च की बॉडी सर्च के अभी उनकी हो रही थी तो जो वो उसमें एक लंबे बालों वाला लड़का था वो वापस गाड़ी के अंदर आया और उसने अपने आप को और गाड़ी को धमाके से ब्लास्ट कर दिया जिससे दहशत गर्द फौरी तौर पे मौके पे हलाक हो गए एक पुलिस एहलकार उसमें शहीद हो गया और चार पुलिस एहलकार जख्मी हैं उनको हमने हॉस्पिटल शिफ्ट कर दिया है और उनका इलाज हो रहा है मैं ये समझता हूँ कि जिस हाजर दमागी से और दलेरी के साथ पुलिस अफसरों ने काम किया और इंटरसेप्ट किया गाड़ी को this city has been on a high security alert since the attack and the police have announced a raft of measures including 25 checkpoints to counter any new threat by the terrorist. Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan, a banned terrorist group, has reactivated after the capture of Kabul by the Afghan Taliban. The DDP, believed to be close to Al-Qaeda, has been blamed for several deadly attacks across Pakistan, including an attack on army headquarters in 2009 
assaults on military bases and the 2008 bombing of the Marriott Hotel in Islamabad. In 2014, the Pakistani Taliban stormed the Army Public School in the northwestern city of Peshawar, killing at least 150 people, including 131 students. The Friday attack was the first suicide bombing incident in Islamabad since the 2014 courthouse bombing that killed 10 people. यहां एटन फोर में रहता हूं यही सात घर है हमारा तो सुबह पौनी 11 बजे ब्लास्ट हुआ तो बहुत जोरदार धमाका हुआ था हमने तो सोचा कि ट्रांसफार्मर गए फट गए ना बिजली भी बंद हो गया था तो जब बाहर आए तो टैक्सी था उस पे आग जल रही थी पुलिस वाले भी थे तो गोश बिखरे हुए थे रोड पे बॉडी पड़े हुए थे Pakistan has lost thousands of lives in the country, but still the country has not changed its strategy. Failing to persecute several leaders of UN proscribed terror groups and even going as far as to ensure their protection, Pakistan is directly assisting the burgeoning Islamic terrorist threat in the country. Pakistan has long failed to take appropriate action to combat terrorism within and outside of the country. The country is now facing the consequences of its inaction and those suffering the most continue to be Pakistani citizens. Let us now turn our attention to India's Jammu and Kashmir, where the security forces have now started a number of operations to dismantle the network of Pakistan-backed terrorism. Islamabad is making desperate attempts to launch infiltration bits in the region. However, Indian Army with the help of Jammu and Kashmir police is putting an end to these terrorists with a commitment to upholding peace and tranquility in the area. Recently, security forces neutralized four park back terrorists in Sidra area on the outskirts of Jammu city. According to officials, four terrorists were travelling in a truck from Punjab after infiltrating from Pakistan. A report. The neighboring country of Pakistan and its proxies have made repeated attempts to disturb the peace in Jammu and Kashmir region. Terrorists are being given funds and training so they may sneak into Jammu and Kashmir and assault security personnel and locals in the region. However, Indian security forces consistently thwart infiltration attempts and eliminate terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir putting a stop to Islamabad's nefarious efforts. In the latest on December 28, security forces neutralized four park back terrorists in the Sidra area on the outskirts of Jammu city. According to officials, four terrorists were traveling in a truck from Punjab after infiltrating from Pakistan. The encounter broke out around 7.25 in the morning when a team of the police and army, already on high alert due to Republic Day, tried to stop the truck at the Sidra intersection near Tavi Bridge on the Jammu Srinagar National Highway. When security personnel began to search the truck, ultras hiding with AK rifles started firing and an encounter ensued. Both the police and army sent reinforcements including para-SF commandos, along with their dog squad, to eliminate the terrorists. Four Atanki who were killed in the truck, were eight big hatiyar were found, which were seven AK-47 and one M4 rifle were found. Three pistols were found, and there were also some magazines, ammunition and pouch were found. The situation in Jammu and Kashmir has shown considerable improvement, symbolizing a return to normalcy. The security environment has considerably shifted in the favor of security forces. The terrorists have suffered heavy attrition and simultaneously have not been able to replenish their dwindling cadres due to the effectiveness of the counter-infiltration measures. As per the report of the Ministry of Home Affairs, there has been a substantial decline in the number of active terrorists in the region, from 184 in 2021 
to 134 in 2022. Of the 134 active terrorists, 51 are local terrorists and 83 are foreign terrorists. The terrorists belong to terror outfits like lashkar e taiba its offshoot the resistant front, jaish e Muhammad, and Hezbollah Mujahideen. Today, it is, uh, it is appreciated that the number of terrorists still operating in the Kashmir Valley is in the region of 150 to 200 and their number will keep on decreasing. A Pakistani army is not able to support them with the help of artillery, fire, etc. because Pakistan itself is in deep trouble. Despite all the embarrassment and name calling at various global forums, Pakistan continues to use terrorism as an instrument of its state policy. In a sophisticated world where other countries are looking forward to establishing peace and harmony and developing new technologies for the advancement of world settlement, Pakistan's state policy of terrorism is causing violence and is creating an environment of distrust in the world. Residents settled near the border areas are living in constant fear due to frequent firing along the border from the Pakistani side. Pakistani army generals, who are the real masterminds behind the most of the terrorism across the globe, believe that the world won't notice their devious plans. But to their surprise, not only all of their diabolic activities are being monitored, but being given a befitting reply by the Indian forces. Pakistan is not happy with the peaceful atmosphere in Jammu and Kashmir and wants to promote narco-terrorism by luring the youth towards drugs and using the money earned out of narco sale to fuel terrorism. The drones are being sent from across the border to airdrop narcotics and weapons. The continuous flow of narcotics, especially heroin, from across the border in recent years is posing serious challenge to security forces in Kashmir. A report. Narco-terrorism is an integral component of Pakistan's state sponsorship of cross-border terrorism, used so as to fund and conduct asymmetric warfare against its neighbours. Over 80% of drugs in India are infiltrating from neighbouring Pakistan. The country's intelligence agencies have been working with terror groups on a kill two birds with one stone strategy to smuggle weapons and narcotics into India through the same routes. Islamabad has been heavily relying on the sale of drugs in Kashmir to fund its terror infrastructure. In the last 18 months, more than 80% of drugs seized in Jammu and Kashmir were smuggled in from Pakistan, also from narco-terrorism. The Union Territory has become a soft target for drug mafia as it is being used as a transit route from Pakistan, Afghanistan to Punjab and Delhi. Pakistan's formal economy is in a poor state. Everyone knows that the narco money is being used to fund the terrorists as well as to generate money through irregular means. And therefore, with Haqqani in the government in Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan finds that this is a lucrative trade and therefore the drug cartels are trying every possible means to send the narcotics into India and create a market and also spoil the new generation. Pakistan has employed a dual strategy to undermine the social fabric of the valley, delivering both weapons and drugs. The most often used opiate in Kashmir is heroin, that is trafficked from Pakistan. Drug trafficking across borders gives terrorism financial support and if it is not stopped immediately, could damage the lives of the region's children. The finances generated from drugs such as heroin fund separatists activities and spread other centrifugal tendencies. 
Terror modules that have been busted in the recent past by security agencies show a more significant challenge to society and security. They would like to certainly find a number of means wherever they can induct it easily whether through drones or through coast or through Gujarat coast or whichever coast they find that the security is slightly lax and therefore I think they will exploit all possible uh, means uh, to induct narcotics into India. We have to be careful and we need to uh, strengthen our border uh, surveillance, intelligence uh, as well as the technological resources uh, to check these uh, trade of narcotics. The nexus between drug traffickers, criminal networks and terrorists are potent threat. Exploitation of the trafficking routes by terrorists with the help of well-entrenched criminal networks to infiltrate with arms and explosives have added a critical dimension to the security of the borders. Moreover, large-scale availability of narcotics and drugs encourages demand for narcotics and drugs by domestic population. Consumption of which produces dysfunctional behaviour thereby creating law and order problem in the society. Therefore, India needs to adopt a comprehensive approach to tackle this challenge. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.